Dit is Papa Alfa 0 Eco Tingo Eco voor de Daily Minutes met een nieuwsupdate voor vandaag, 25 september 2016. Dit is het bulletin van zondag. Our bulletin of Sunday and the Monday morning repeat are in English. We have an image in PD90 today and some Morse code words. We will start with some DX news. This is GB2RS, the news broadcasting service of the Radio Society of Great Britain. Now for the DX News, compiled from 425DX News and other sources, Alejandro VU9VEA will be on Easter Island, IOTA SA001 working as Charlie Echo 0 Y stroke call sign between the 26th and 30th of September. Listen for him on a variety of HF bands, working SSB, send QSL cards to IK2TDUW. Stan LZ1GC and Emil DL8JJ will operate as Hotel 44 Golf Charlie from Guadalcanal OC047 uh, from until the the 3rd of October with two stations on the HF bands using CW, SSB, Ritty and PSK. Emil then returns to Germany but Stan moves to Nendo Island to operate as H40 uh, GC or is that H4 Yes, it is H40 GC from the 4th to the 17th. He then returns to Guadalcanal for another stint until the 21st of October. QSL via Club uh, club Log, OQRS and uh, Logbook of the World. Casimir, DL2 SBY, will be active as Sugar 79 KB until the 2nd of October from Praslin Island, AF024, and from the 2nd to the 8th, Eden Island. Look for him on the HF bands including SSB, CW, Ritty, QSL, DL2, SBY, Direct Club, Log, OQRS for Direct and Bureau. Um, Yosef, EA3BT and Nuria, EA3WL, will be on the air from the 26th of September to the 1st of October as S9BT and S9WL respectively on the 6 to 40 metre bands SSB, Ritty and some CW QSL, both calls EA3BT Aaron, VA1AXC is on the air as Charlie Yankee Zero stroke call sign from Sable Island NAO63 until early November mostly 20 metres during his spare time SSB only, QSL, JE1LET Special event news, Enigma Reloaded 2016 takes place until the, twep- until the 1st of October. The main goal of the event is to promote amateur activity as, uh, to promote amateur activity as possible, uh, as much as possible, that should say, all over the world, celebrating the history of the Enigma cipher machine and its crucial wor- role in World War II. From the 17th to the 30th of September, stations registered as activator stations will be on the air on the 1st of October. Those stations will exchange predefined CW messages. Full details www.enigma-reloaded.it A group of six amateurs will be active from Komoro Islands until September 30 as Delta 66 Delta. They will be operating 160 to 10 meters, CW, SSB and RITI. Only a few days left, Echo 21 Echo India Charlie will be active again from Laos until September 27 as X-Ray Whiskey 1 India Charlie. Alpha Alpha 1 Alpha Charlie will be active again from Bermuda Islands October 10 until 15 as Victor Papa 9 stroke Alpha Alpha 1 Alpha Charlie. He will be operating on HF bands. Kilo Mike 3 Tango, Kilo 5 Sulu Delta, Whiskey 6 Lima Delta will be active from Aruba in CQ WWDX SSB contest October 29 until 30 as Papa 40 Lima. They will be operating in Mike Sierra category. Five German amateurs are planning to be active from Anguilla Island October 25 until November 7. They will be operating 160 to 10 meters, CW, SSB, Ritty and PSK 31. Delta Foxtrot 8 Delta X-Ray will be active from Shanghai, China, November 9 until 16 as Bravo 4 slash Delta Foxtrot 8 Delta X-Ray. DF8 DX will also be active from Cyprus in the Mediterranean, November 19 until 22 as 5 Bravo stroke Delta Foxtrot 8 Delta X-Ray. Alpha Bravo 2 Echo will be active from Costa Rica November 24 until 29 as Tango India 5 stroke Alpha Bravo 2 Echo. He will be also active in CQWWDXCW contest November 26 and 27 in SOAB HP category. Peter Golf Zero Papa Whiskey Hotel has moved permanently to his new QTH on Norfolk Island. He will be active there as Victor Papa 9 Papa Hotel. He will be operating on HF bands. 
From the headquarters of the American Radio Relay League in Newington, Connecticut, this is ARRL Audio News. The Internet of Things Institute, or IOT, has named ARRL member Limor Freed, AC2SN of New York City, as one of the 25 most influential women in the IOT industry. IOT embraces the concept of connecting devices from cell phones to appliances and machine components to the Internet or each other. Individuals were named on the basis of attainment of leadership roles related to IoT, hands-on experience developing IoT technology, outstanding research related to IoT, and social reach, among others. Freed founded the open-source hardware firm Adafruit from her MIT dorm room in 2005. The Manhattan-based company, which now employs more than 50 people, offers tools, equipment, and electronic components targeted at the maker audience, including IoT technology. She was the first female engineer to appear on the cover of Wired magazine and was Entrepreneur magazine's Entrepreneur of the Year in 2012. In June, Freed was designated as a White House Champion of Change. As Adafruit's sole owner, Freed has become known for creating resources for and supporting the learning of electronics for makers of all ages and skill levels. Now with this week's satellite update, here's Bruce Page, KK5DO. From the AMSAT News Service comes this week's story about Rad FX Sat. AMSAT Vice President of Engineering Jerry Buxton and Zero JY has just posted a video of the final day of Rad FX Sat live testing, where the satellite gets one more time in the sun and on the air for data on power and temperatures. In the video, Jerry secures the solar panel covers, does a pre-flight initialization, and packs it up to send off to Tyvac in California for shock testing, which occurs September 22nd through the 30th. After the shock test, the satellite will come back to Fox Labs for post-shock testing to make sure nothing broke. Next, she will be taken to Orlando for vibration and bake-out. That will be October 10th through the 14th. That will be the finish, and RADFXSAT will then wait in the Fox Labs for delivery and integration in January of 2017, with a March 16th launch date. A link to the video can be found at AMSAT.org, clicking on Services and AMSAT News Service, and looking in Bulletin 262. This is Bruce Page, KK5DO, for the ARRL Audio News. Recalling the earlier efforts of the FCC and telecommunications and utility interests to roll out broadband over power line technology, the amateur radio community has been buzzing with questions about AT&T's just announced AirGig BPL plan to make broadband available via apparently similar technology. ARRL's earlier anti-BPL campaign and market forces eventually led to the demise of the prior BPL initiative. ARRL lab manager Ed Hare, W1RFI, who spearheaded the earlier effort to quantify BPL's threat to amateur radio's HF spectrum and remains the resident expert on the subject, said this newest BPL incarnation should not pose an interference issue for radio amateurs. This technology uses millimeter wave RF signals, a 30 gigahertz to 300 gigahertz, coupled onto the surface of power lines to transmit the signal along the line with relatively low losses. AT&T's September 20th announcement said the company is deep in the experimentation phase of the developing technology and initial field trials are set to begin in 2017. Hare said the league will keep an eye and ear out for interference problems, but he believes that the frequencies involved and the fact that these signals should not propagate far from the lines will pose little risk to the amateur radio service. After looking at this technology, it looks nothing like the type of HF and VHF BPL that caused us so many problems years ago. The sky is not falling. Hare will be a guest on W5KUB's Amateur Radio Roundtable Tuesday, September 27th at 8 p.m. Central Time to discuss the issue.
Deze mensen zijn dagelijks vanaf ongeveer 1900 uur te beluisteren via PI2NOS. De uitzending wordt een dag later om half elf ochtends herhaald.